Um, I'm with the Spanish Colonial Presidio Soldiers down at downtown Presidio. Um, the Presidio was founded in 1775. That's one year older than the U.S. It sounds one year older than the U.S. And um, I portray what's called a Catalonian volunteer. These guys came from Spain. Um, before these guys came, you guys ever heard of Father Kino? Long, uh, what is that? Kino Highway. There's a big man on the horse, big brown hat. That's Father Kino. This guy was up here in this territory in the 1600s, um, bringing missions like San Javier Mission, and he was trying to uh, bring Christianity to the the natives here, the the Pima Indians. Um, he was here for a while, and after that, he kind of went away. And there was no European settlements here. You guys heard of Two Back, Arizona? Yeah. Tubac, Arizona was the first European settlement, 1751. And what happened there, uh, Spanish soldiers started coming up because there's a mission down there called Tumacacri. Tubac, though, it's situated in the valley between the Santa Rita Mountains and the Tumacacris, and that's a major Apache raiding area. So they were constantly being hit by Apaches, and there was a big Pima revolt, the Pima Indians. So they decided we need to find somewhere different to go. So they came up to Tucson. And a man by the name of Don Hugo O'Connor, he was an Irishman working for the Spanish army. He came from uh, Dublin, Ireland, went down to Spain. He's like, no one else would accept him except the Spanish army. So uh, he came, he joined, and he became an inspector for the Presidio system. And he came up to Tucson, and he's like, I like this spot. We're going to choose this. So August 20th, 1775, everyone from Tubac comes from to Tucson, and they establish the fort, the Presidio. At first, it was just a wooden, they were just wooden, a wooden palisade and little dirt hills to protect them. But finally, on, uh, in 1780, they got hit by 300 Apache Indians. Now, these guys are, thank you. These guys are used to being hit by maybe three, ten Apaches at one time. But this whole raid of Indians came in, 300 of them. Most of the soldiers were out in a town in Sonora, Mexico called Arispe. That's where the supply points were. So about the ten soldiers that were at the Presidio, they got all the women and children into the church. They, uh, they secured the church and they were trying to fight the Apaches. The Apaches had never heard a cannon, though. So they run up to the cannon tower, set off the cannon, and, you know, the Apaches think it's some sort of a god or something, and they dispersed. And after that, that's when they decided to put up the big adobe walls. It was an 11-acre complex, and uh, it ran downtown. It had uh, four cannons, two towers, blacksmith shop, cemetery, jail, everything. The majority of the people living there are called Presidial Soldiers, and they dress a little bit differently than I am. Those soldiers that lived there were the permanent soldiers. Those, guy, those guys, they wore round hats. They wore something like this, although they wore a, a, a deerskin leather vest. It was this huge vest that went from their shoulders down to their knees. This vest was seven layers thick, weighed 14 pounds. It took 14 deer just to make one of these vests. This vest was the bulletproof vest of the day and it stopped Apache arrows from penetrating you. It's called the Queta and these Presidial soldiers are mounted cavalry. They sit on horseback, they have a shield, they have a nine foot lance and their vest and they're riding around and that's their main weapon is as they're, they're riding, they're, it just takes little force to, to knock down the enemy. When the Apache raids start getting really high up here, that's when they call me. I am a Catalonian volunteer, and I'm sent from Catalonia, Spain. That's almost near France. So 1775, 1776, what's happening on the east coast of the U.S.? Colonization. You should know this. What did I do? Colonization. The American Revolution. With George Washington, the British, and all that. 
that's happening back east at the same time period. Originally, my garrison, we're supposed to go to Florida, South Carolina, Cuba, Virginia, all those, all those uh, places up there to fight the British. What happens though is the, the permanent residents living here in Tucson, they're suffering and they need the extra help. So the orders get sent to Cuba and to Spain and they say, hey, Catalonian volunteers, they need your help in Tucson. So we skipped the East Coast and we came down to Veracruz, Mexico and we marched about almost over a thousand miles to Tucson and we landed here to help the Presidial soldiers that were living here. And the reason they needed us is, um, of course, we have heavy mounted. They needed light infantry to get into the bushes where the Apaches were going. And uh, that's how we got here. My group, we eventually went up into Canada. We marched from Tucson into Canada um, to stop the Russian influence. The Apaches were a problem for the Spaniards here, but this is during the 1700s. You have other colonizers coming in. England wants to come in from the east, and you have Russia coming down from Alaska, Canada from the north. So we are under King Carlos III of Spain at that time, and King Carlos wants to get as much territory as, as possible. So uh, we're, we're heading up all the west coast to stop the Russians and English from coming in as well. It's kind of a, a brief rundown on who we are. I never knew that. So uh, yeah, th this was the real wild west. We were we were the Tucson was the farthest north, what's called a presidio port. We we're the farthest north for, uh, port. There was nothing north of us. It was, it was all no man's land. There was a few um, little pueblos up in California. San Diego was one of them. 1769. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever been driving around, you've seen big signs on the highway, it's called Juan Bautista de Anza, yes. uh, historic route. Does anyone know anything about that? No. Juan Bautista de Anza was a colonel in the Spanish army. And as I said, Russia's coming in from the north and England's coming in from the east, so King Carlos wants to expand territory. How's he going to do that? He needs to build more cities, more towns. So Juan Bautista de Anza, he was a colonel, he was born a little bit south of Tubac in 1736. He gathers a group of 200 people, 2,000 head of cows, soldiers, colonists, everything, and they marched from Tubac all the way up to San Francisco. Well, they were going to a place called Monterey. That's where they uh, wanted to start a, a little village and start colonizing there. A goat happened to wander off and two soldiers went up to go find it and they just kept going and they went over a hill and they saw the San Francisco Bay. No one had ever seen it before because of the fog. Well these soldiers happened to get there on a sunny day and when they saw it they're like this can hold a whole armada of ships. So uh, that's how San Francisco was founded. The original San Franciscans are people from Tubac and Tumacacri, Sonora. Do you guys have any questions so far? No? Sometimes this thing didn't always work. Have, have you guys ever heard something called a flash in the pan? Yeah. Flash in the pan happens when you put your gunpowder in here and only the gunpowder ignites and the, the whole gun doesn't go off. It's, it's called a flash in the pan. If that happens, there's a small hole here. I have this little tool called a pick and whisk. What you would do is you'd pick out that hole, try to unclog it, and you'd brush out the gunpowder too. Try to make it. If it didn't go off again, that's when you refer to your bayonet and you start marching it out. And there's different techniques you can thrust, different kind of things with that bayonet. So my first question is, you want to join the Spanish army, what is the first thing you need? One and only thing you need. Actually, you actually need two things. What are they? They'll give you that in the army. You gotta know how to speak Spanish. Not really. We had Germans, we had Italians, and we had Irish in the Spanish army. You he, he picked up. You needed one top tooth and one bottom tooth. That's it. Reason being is you have your cartridges. When you 
You need your top teeth and bottom teeth because you need to tear. Tear that off. One shot, one kill. One shot, one kill. These are not rifled. There's no grooves in it, which means when the musket ball is coming out of the barrel, it's bouncing down the barrel back and forth like this. Once it comes out, your ball is going to start going at a curve. So if for a target, you're not going to hit the target. The idea was with these things is to shoot a big cloud of lead at once. You know, you have a bunch of people. The idea is to shoot a big cloud. You want to see. The goal is to hit something. Also, when, it's, when this does have a ball in it, there's a nice recoil. So you would hear on the fields, aim below the knees, aim below the knees. You'd want to shoot below their knees because by the time this came, that boom came up, it's going to try to go for the chest now. So I'll, uh, I'll do one more, maybe maybe three more, and uh, hopefully it'll, it'll work now. From attention. Cargan! Apunten! Fuego! You guys count how many seconds? 